everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Niji Sanji is announcing a booth of four life-size statues of EN and JP for the exhibition booth. Now, Hollow Live has done this before with Gargura, I believe. They did it, I believe it was last year at their uh, Hollow Expo. They did one, at least uh, one year of Hollow Expo. Not sure they're going to be doing it this year for Anime Expo because I know they're going to be showing up there, but I'm not sure they're going to do that. They do it for their Hollow Expo, though. They do some life size figures of their Hollow Expo uh, people. So they're going to be at, at E65 and E70. And are you ready uh, to meet four life size statues, Nidhi Sanji Yen and Nidhi Sanji Livers? Which ones are they going to be done? Who's going to bring false ID cut out? Surely not Elira again. Wish I could attend. Reminds me of the story about Elira and her friend in Japan going to a One Piece exhibit at Tokyo Tower and encouraged encountering a life-size Trafalgar Law statue sitting on the couch. And Elira was too shy, scared, and crying to sit close enough to him to picture together. Yeah, well, yeah, th those are cute stories. But it's a weird idea for them to do this. Are they copying Hololive now? Anyway, let's guess Crow Noir and who else in the end? I guess it's Elira and he's one of the Luxium boys. Yeah, that's my guess as well. My bet is Riku, 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 and JP side Riku. Uh, can't be Uki. All the white people talk, taking selfies of the statue with sentiments of conniptions. Uh, shouldn't a 3D debut precede a life-size statue first? Not on Nidhi Sandi's side because they want to make money. Here we have the statue of Gargura, Usada Pekora, and Hoshimachi Suise. Kuro Sanji, only three will make it four. It's not the amount of statues. The prestige behind those statues is what makes it good. And like I said, Hollow Life seems to have done it first. And of course... Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery in this case. Here we have Kotakatora Hime update version 3, which is basically her letting everyone know that she's still around. I'm not sure if this is skinwalking, as a lot of people think it might be skinwalking. Of course, if you don't remember who Kotakatora Hime is, it's right here, Nidhi Sanji Ien. Um, she's been accused of some stuff in the past, but as there's no proof, I can't really say one way or the other. I do know that she did badmouth Sayu in the past. Um, at least the person that Saya used to be, a Zion Lanza. So that is one thing that's working against her. But she is in a mental health hiatus, so I will not be able to, I do not want to, uh, mark her negatively too much. But of course, we have this here. Collab merch with Portland Trailblazers is out now. Let's pave the way together with this super awesome team. Of course, it's great. But the fact is, they aren't able to purchase it. You aren't able to purchase it if it isn't in Japan, which is huge. It's bad. It's like, why the hell are you doing this? What the heck is your problem? Type of thing going on. You know what I mean? I don't understand why people do uh, these types of things. Why Nidhi Sanji does these types of things. But um, they never do things properly. Of course, people are happy that Dorahima is there. Kotoka, we love you. The merch is great. We love it. And we still love seeing you too. Of course, positivity is good, especially on a mental health hiatus. I hope the best for her. No matter what critiques I have of her, period, I hope the best for her. But is her tweet or management tweets? It's most likely skinwalking. Writing, but in my, in my honest opinion, it's management. Honestly, why even post in English when the merch isn't available outside of Japan? Don't think either Rakuten or Niji cares about actual sales numbers. I wouldn't really call this an update until we can hear her for certain. We know that they skinwalk. Yeah, we know that they skinwalk. We know that they can take any control of any of your social media. They say it in their actual uh, contract that we've read before. They actually say that, that they can take control of any of your things. As we know, a gotcha system for brush up, there's a gotcha system. There's a raffle system for uh, any brush ups, any of that kind of thing. Uh, it's still funny and ridiculous at the same time for the 300 livers. It's crazy. This thing right here, 3.0 brush ups, Petra, Ren, and I finally got the, won the gotcha. Uh, and the more ridiculous thing is that even then they have the third model passed already and they're going to get new expressions brush ups is the first one because that's the one that Kurosanji gave them and the other newer models are not because it was paid by the livers themselves. So yeah, it seems that they might be paying for certain things themselves. The brush ups are covered by Nidhi Sanji, but maybe it might seem like some other things were paid by the, the livers themselves. In ID branch, getting 3.0 brush up is basically means the liver would graduate soon. Consider your severance pay. Man, even the picks they chose for them are looking emotionally exhausted. Petra looks like she's on the verge of tears. Yeah, she does look like she's on the verge of tears. Honestly, it doesn't look good. Um, why even have EN in the brush-up lottery when they said they're not going to support EN anymore? Probably just contractual obligations. Not only that, it's probably also preventing them from graduating. It's like, oh, no, 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 don't graduate. We're going to give you the brush-up. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. 
because we don't want you to graduate because it looks bad on us. Wait, you're telling me they do a gotcha for who gets updates in their model? Yes, it's well known that they get the gotchas. Yes, it's well known that it's a raffle system. It's basically whoever ends up winning it is whoever ends up winning it. It's not merit-based. It's not anything. It's just pure luck. And I don't like that. I prefer it to be merit-based. A sort of post-mortem of uh, Nidhi Sandhi and Summer Jam due to the suddenness of the cancellation. And all the numbers weren't out there because of the fact that, you know, things were canceled. So we're taking a look at everything. The sales numbers in 39.5 days, they only sold 300 uh, in total, 344. Total of 455. Uh, they sold very little, 500 for the boys group, 545 for Corona Noir. In total, they only sold 1,500 tickets out of out of like a total of like 7, 8K that they could have sold or even more. Actually, for all three of them, that would have been like 10K because 3,000 seats each time, I think. So it'd be like 10K or more. So that's really, really bad for them. Tickets sold per hour after initial hour, 0.19%, 0.12, all these things like that. Tickets sold per day after, uh, 4.56 per day which is not horrible, but it is horrible that they aren't actually able to see everything that they want. Of course, here in 39.5 days, they made $26,000, $28,000, 25000 and 79000 in total, which probably wasn't enough to cover maybe 100 k or more for the actual venue. You have here is projected ticket sales after 50 days, week projection, 12.64, 13.46, 14.6, and 13.52 in total. Uh, data sellout would have been in 2026 and 2027. That's why they ended up uh, canceling it. As I've shown before, these are the ticket sales. Only about 10% or less were sold compared to other ones who sold nearly as much in a much smaller venue. They sold nearly as much or better in a much smaller venue as you're seeing here. Obey Me, first virtual concert. It's going to be 5th of June. Um, sold from 5th of June. It's going to be, you know, there. All these things here. Again, they're doing really well for smaller venues. So these are actually doing well. Two about Los Angeles getting 38K total. They're doing about the same as the large Nidhi Sanji group. And they are much smaller. And of course, we have Hololife, who sold out after about an hour of it being live. You know, the badges, Friday, day one, 67, day two, the, the three day, 129. Hololife saw tickets, 135, 98, 72, and 40 bucks. Cost comparisons, because this guy loves numbers and I love numbers too. We have here. Friday, Hololive Soar tickets. Gold, if you're doing uh, buying the tickets and the three-day passes, is how much it would be. Silver, Bronze, GA. Nidhi Sanji, uh, the pit, the Summer Jam, it would be 170 and 245 for the four-day. So it's around the same price. It's around the same price overall. Uh, welcome to Wonder World. Um, it would be around the same price as, as Hololive, so it's about even with everything. Seating plan adjusted, projected tickets 489 and overcorrected. Uh, the corrected parts are 372. So they corrected all their numbers and they're just showing it here. And of course, like I said, this looks very bad for Nidhi Sanji to give up like that. But you can understand when you look at the numbers, which is why I look, look, like looking at the numbers. A win is a win is a win. I'm not going to be here and just be negative, a negative Nelly or whatever you want to call it. Melico had a big boost from GTA streams. It appears to be carrying over from a regular content. I almost reached 10K CCV on a hand cam stream. And it only dropped when she finished the cooking part and started reading Super Chats. So that makes sense. That's good. It's good that that kind of thing uh, benefited her very well. Definitely the most popular streamer, Nidhi Sanji, quote unquote, EN right now. She's pretty much JP, but went into EN. I believe she even admitted that she went into EN is because it was a little bit easier. JP was very saturated. She kind of said something like that from what I remember. At least the rumors say that. Reminds me of the jokes of Iris and Anya being JP, but that's the one isn't. this one isn't funny. She saved someone else from getting into the disaster, so whatever. Remember, folks, she's a member of the EN branch and not a single USD Supa. Really says how SVTA must be if new members are going to EN and getting potentially far fewer viewers even before the drop to avoid entering the academy. The source for the data is vtpoi.cat. Of course, we always get the VT stats. She's getting a lot of Japanese yen, like 100% pretty much of everything was Japanese yen. That shows who her fan base is. It shows where she's getting her stuff from. Good for her, but don't expect them to linger. But noticing an increase in subs for her, and was wondering if she's just targeting a JP audience more, which I think is what's happening, uh, and it probably confirms it. Can't blame her for giving how the EN side of things is going. It's probably her exit strategy, although less exit, more transfer into the main branch. Yeah, good for her. I'm, you know, supportive of them doing what's good for them. Here we have Loon Loon, which is the breakout hit among all of the new uh, JP the new JP version, because of course it's a long eared, very cute creature. Um, I wish it never bullied like Motordu or Salome. I wish, I hope that they're never bullied because of the cute voice. A lot of people end up 
bullying because of cute voices for some reason. It looks really, really cute. Um, the reason why a lot of people are mentioning uh, Moruru is because Moruru was bullied because of her voice. Now she's Himemori Luna with over a million subscribers on YouTube. So she has become bigger and better than she ever was in Nidisanji. But um, because of Moruru, Salome and things like that, people are scared that she, that Lun Lun is going to be uh, mistreated in the same way. I tend to distrust long-eared, apparently cute things. Lol, sign a contract with me and you can become a VTuber. She's so cute in the way I totally forgot that she was a gen mate. Honestly, yeah, very cute. It's very cute. That's why it works. That's why it's going very strong. That's why she has 470k views for the first stream, the intro stream it looks like. So yeah, she's getting a lot of views because she's in, in Japan, number one. She has a cute voice, number two. She has a cute avatar, number three. That's what makes these things pop out. Everyone deserves to have their Oshi and be happy with their Oshi, no matter where you are, whether it's Nidhi Sanji or otherwise, because as long as the Oshi themselves has not done anything negative, then you can continue enjoying them. Just don't support the larger company is my belief. That's what I think. That's what I say. You could think something different, but that's what I think. Um, actually, I've been protecting her from the hate and stuff on Twitter, YouTube, Reddit, telling myself she didn't do anything wrong, but they're wondering if she actually did. Never and will never learn because Nidhi Sanji just don't want to. Millie's always brought up a hypocrite for protecting them, and the, I hate that she kind of is. She protects the company and is obviously bad in every way. Continues to work there, act as if nothing wrong has happened. That's why Millie Parfait is getting so much hate. It pains this person every time to see it get dragged into the other issues. Um, we all actively liked Millie in this, and feel the same way. Millie fans don't hate her, but we are disappointed and wish for her to graduate. There's only there's no real hate, uh, just people frustrated with her actions so far. She also has a potential, just like Selene, to do big things afterwards if she shows that she has changed. You know what I mean? The only reason she and her gen mates are getting promo now is because a huge chunk of, a chunk of the brand is leaving more spots for promo. So yeah, uh, because of the fact, you know, they're supposedly favorites and things like that. That's why they're getting everything that they're getting. Only people that hate her are people that never watched her. But all my frustrations with Millie from her being too nice when sometimes you got to face the reality Sometimes to Selene uh, about it didn't what it didn't happen to me type of thing. You remember the whole oh that's crazy. Did you ask uh, for permission? Blah blah blah. That kind of stuff is what gets people to hate Millie. As a Pinoya was naturally a very supportive. Uh, the whole fiasco happened now. I can't bring myself to support her anymore. That's understandable. It sucks because people have Oshis for a reason because they help them in tough times. They help them feel better about themselves. They help them you know improve their lives in many cases. A VTuber, uh, Irina Kumai, was doxxed by some people who she thought were friends. And unfortunately, that is something that happens a lot in uh, the VTuber sphere, in the YouTuber sphere, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the ads are there. The ads are all there because um, I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown, but I'm going to show you everything that's happening. Here is the person, Irina Kumai. She's not a, she's not a tiny, tiny one, but she is a uh, kind of a chibi VTuber. Not a chibi, but you know, like cute VTuber. That type of thing. So she put out this document here. She says to my viewers, thank you all for your support. You made the happiest girl alive. And I'm so, so sorry for mentioning drama again. Never speak of the drama again. I want the VTuber. I want you to be a VTuber that you can relax and be happy with and want to be your happiness. Probably delete this after a month, the tweet, not the document. So make sure to archive it. Uh, also request that you don't mention any drama on my streams. I'll continue streaming as usual. See you on Saturday. So yeah, a lot of things happen. The gist of everything that happened here is these people um, people who are an after and provide proof of what they've done to them. These three people have doxxed her, uh, what they did to dox her in order to not go through the 60 something pages that it is on my side. Um, the general gist is these people, Dragon Master, Seraph, uh, Zartaro and Leirisol, they, um, she's from Portugal and the other people from Portugal too, uh, wanted to, you know, uh, open mod applications. Both of them applied, decided to accept them since it would need a bilingual mods since I have both Spanish and Portuguese in the chat. So I wanted all these things. They got comfortable with her. Uh, they DM me to warn me that my docs came out a while back. He sent me a now deleted picture containing my full real name, full address and zip code. Some other things from that point on. I knew it was them, even though dragon lied to me and blamed another known VTuber doxer saying he posted on 4chan discord server. He lied. But I knew and I felt extremely scared. Basically, the reason why she knew it was them, they recommended a specific store because she was looking for a new CPU. 
they recommended a specific store to her. She went to that specific store and uh, they kept all of that. They kept all of that data. They kept all of the specific data there in regards to everything going on. And they made sure to, uh, you know, always use this stuff. I don't know what to do. So I did something I shouldn't have. I pretended I didn't know anything. Act like everything was normal. Pretended the person in the docks wasn't me, even though they both knew it was me and kept pretending to be their oblivious friend. Uh, fake, I guess. Basically, you know, looking at, at the 4chan server, supposedly. Uh, I'll actually like, you know, filthy scum just making just, you know, just making fun and feel better if I knew my mods weren't trying to look, go look for my information online, you know, that type of thing. It was just a lot of a lot of them going back and forth, trying to make mind games. I don't want people being AFK. People are available at different times, but if that's what you want, let me know. Then they had issues with um, being blocked, of course, right there. Thanks for being honest. Hope everything's all right with you. It is. Um, and then basically uh, says, let me talk with them for a bit. Again, wondering why they were blocked, I'm guessing. Um, Keeps going there. Block was apparently misunderstanding. We cleared things up and moved on. After we rarely talked, he'd rarely message me and check up on sometimes, but that was about it. So the mental health kept going downhill from everything that was going on. And um, they were doing a lot of gaslighting. They were doing uh, a lot of pretending it wasn't them. A lot of pretending all these things weren't happening. Of course, a lot of this is in 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 Portuguese. Uh, but yes, a lot of these things, we didn't have any intentions with this stuff. Never intended to share anyone or do anything with the information. You're making things worse for yourself by telling me this, by the way, uh, basically saying that it was, you know, even the guy that gave the info didn't really want to share it, but they have the information. Basically, they went looking for it in the worst best case scenario. They just went looking for it. Worst case scenario, they were the ones who spread it. And um, a lot of these things, uh, it was honestly a really funny way to find you, uh, as Artaro said, or data miners or anything. Can't tell where it was, but because of the purchase, so people were saying it was because of the purchase of the CPU. This is the more this is the part where you could see, see that they were actually getting stuff from the purchase. I always knew, and from the moment I started having trust issues with you and Dragon, all of them Portuguese viewers, knew knew that the person was snitched. So, so Dragon snitched on Zartaro for having it. But yeah, basically only me and him know. Just saw through the lies. Uh, so you guys snitched on yourselves. So yeah, they, she found out. They all tried to apologize. They all tried to make it seem like it was nothing big. Um, after this, when I sent a pathetic message begging them not to hurt my family and blocked everyone involved, during the dawn of October 1st, a few hours later, Zartaro admitted everything. Went to sleep, and during the night of October 1st, a new member joined my server, said they wanted to DM to talk to me about my old VTube group. It was this, Seraph. And it says, I understand you're upset that someone went to look for your personal information. After being worried when I went away because they were paranoid and leaking or something, I'll give you peace of mind now. Haven't thought about you one single time ever since that happened. But then again, they went and did this. I wouldn't even be sending a message if it wasn't getting called at 4 a.m. because of fear mongering that you caused out of petty revenge. So they're trying to blame her now. If anyone was after him that he'd leak the docs. Yeah, victim blaming and guilt tripping message. Graduate October 14th. At the time, I kept thinking about what went wrong. She graduated from her old VTuber thing when it went wrong. Um, finally gathered the courage, did unlisted YouTube stream, promoted it through the account. At that stream, Dragon would post two tweets, simple gifs and no caption, one of them as on his personal account. Just when I thought I was out of it, they dragged me back in, type of thing. They're pretty much trying all these nasty things. Uh, checked his profile again, no interaction whatsoever. No one found him, no one harassed him. They were again doing victim blaming, pretending that they were being harassed, pretending that they were being doxxed. Uh, the name of the guy who actually got her doxxed is how long ago the whole storm was. Another lie too, how the right person is still interact on Twitter and they're still in the same server. This can be easily proven with Dragon's Box's post and the rest of replies to Dragon's personal account. So their letter to the doxers is that you are in the wrong here. You abused the trust and went out of your way to gather personal information. But I believe that you start at the start, you didn't mean it maliciously, but it became malicious afterwards. And they did actually start doing malicious things. She, uh, says that you've caused me to be scared for over a year. It doesn't matter if nothing happened. What matters is that you hurt me and doubled down on instead of recognizing your mistake. To Larisol, um, I'm not sure if it was you, but given that yourself told me that you were friends, the one working on that store, I think it's correct to assume it was you. I know you did it to other VTubers and you told me exactly where you work. If you don't want me to get these fired, then make your friends behave and not retaliate. To Zartaro, of course, thank you for always being kind. He's pretending to, but I don't trust you anymore because of everything that happened. To Dragon, Dragon, you are a manipulator and a liar. You'll probably try to damage control on your server and spin lies. I wouldn't be so angry at you if you hadn't sent that petty message through your alt. So yeah, this person is basically sent a picture with my full name, home address, and email, and then deleted it. Uh, on Discord. So sent all that information in screenshots, but apparently that was a misunderstanding. I only blocked you after arguing with Zartaro about everything. 
you know that very well. This is not all your fault. The reason I'm focusing on you is because of the petty things you said. So they lied, they manipulated, they gaslit, all that kind of stuff. GM, SC, and RP, you three. I know much more than you think. Open up when a mailman knocks on your door, okay? A document signed by a lawyer should be arriving soon. If at any point I ever see just a hint of information online, I will assume it was you and proceed with the lawsuit. Don't try anything because I really won't rest until either you pay me thousands as compensation or go to jail. And hopefully this is the end of this whole chapter. It does suck for this VTuber who just wants to move on with their life. Hopefully they get to. I really hope they get to. Koinuko announces graduation, however, hints to something more in the future. So Koinuko is um, this person here. This person here. Pubico, here they have their, their announcement. The announcement, the full one here. It says, never in like my two years of VTubing has a super brown dog did uh, I ever think I'd be making one of these white background black text announcements, but never say never, am I right? It, they're going to be ending all streaming activities after July 25th, 2024. After that time, you will see me slightly active on social media and in my Discord server. However, I will be ceasing all streaming activities and no longer upload content on either of the channels. The decision has been brewing in my mind for a while now and want to go forward with my career exploring bigger opportunities that I've always dreamed of being part of. I will never forget the time I spent with all of you as Koinuko, all the accounts we've been through together and all the fun times we've shared. If it wasn't for you guys, I would have been especially, wouldn't be the special dog I am today. Previously mentioned, my Discord server will remain up. I made a decision after seeing the friendship and connections my viewers have made with each other, and I cannot bear taking that from them. My socials will remain up as well, with only YouTube and Twitch ceasing all uploading activities. As you may have already seen, some of my merch will be taken down after my hiatus. The merch will only remain standing until further notice is my Uwo Market merch, the Waifu, waifu bun, Buddies plushie, and my Cuddly Octopus Dakimakura. As always, love you guys very much, and I really, uh, truly wouldn't be here w without your help. It's basically, you know, saying thank you for everything. I'm going to be moving on. And, um, you know, hope she smashes it wherever she does next. Could she be joining something bigger? Look out for corporate VTuber in the space theme, I guess. Uh, she said during the stream she will not be redebuting under a different name or model. So I'm thinking she probably won't be back. Unfortunately, it's probably something IRL that she's going to be doing. And good luck to them. This is just a bit of an interesting look at things. Uh, office horror stories. I mean, at this point, you got to be professional work horror stories. Uh, what are your wildest work stories? Of course, um, on the 29th at 00, I guess, JST. It might have already happened. Uh, imagine if an ex Niji Liver submitted a story. Nah, manager, something who actively work within the company would be better. I'd love to hear about that diva or tyrant Riku. Sayu and Doki Bird already. What is, wait a sec. Uh, she got a second outfit. That's the third outfit. She got a new outfit like a week or two ago. She'd become biblically accurate Archangel, pretty much. Um, wait a sec. Uh, let's, people here, given the ongoing current situation with Niji, I have to wonder if her streaming on this subject is a bright idea. I can't help but respect, suspect that she's going to delusion Niji stories. Yeah, it's a bit of, uh, we get, to, we're going to be able to get to see the memes that come out of this one. Let's see how this one goes. Here we have a pretty powerful meme. Let's take a look at this meme itself. Uh, we'll try it with sound and we'll see how it goes. Riku. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, Majora's Mask, I believe. It's that weird and wacky moon. I think this is Majora's Mask. Yeah, because I think Majora's Mask was the one that had that weird and wacky moon. Correct me if I'm wrong, of course. It's the bad ending, yes. The bad ending involves Riku. Zelda Majora's Mask. Okay, yes it is. And there he is. There's there, there's there's a little Zelda. He's like, what? What's going on? The Ian Livers. The Ian Livers are like, what's going on? This bandment. Ian Livers, no! Merging. No! Quarter four reports. Don't disappear on me. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Yes, they have. Unfortunately. Gotta love these memes. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.